Hey there ladies and jelly spoons, Jote here again. Today we're going to be doing a project for my cousin. Now he's a little camera shy, so he's not going to be on. He's kind of staying off in the background and everything. But this is his truck uh, that we're going to be working on. And it's a Chevy. We won't hold that up against him or anything like that. I'm a Ford guy. He's a Chevy guy. We're family. What can you do? All right, so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be adding these high intensity lights to his brush guard. We're going to be putting them down here at the bottom. He's already got one light bar in the center of his brush guard. He's got another one that goes around the, uh, the top there, uh, kind of at the, uh, the roof level. So we're going to add these two and see if we can't shed some light on his problems. All right, so this is what the finished product is going to look like. As you can see, we've already got this one mounted on the uh, passenger side. I am going to take you over to the driver's side and explain to you how we did it, but that way you can see the layout with the rest of the truck. It's back here behind the edge of this part of the brush guard. It's above this part of the brush guard. Those are all things that you want to take into consideration when you're mounting these lights is if you're going through a uh, high brush, you don't want to be damaging your lights on top of everything else. You know, I mean, that's part of four wheeling is we're going to mess our trucks up a little bit. That's, that's a risk we're willing to take for the fun that it gives us. So just thinking uh, a little bit ahead, make sure that your brush guard does extend past the front of the light and below the bottom of the light. And hopefully if you don't hit any uh, you too big of branches or anything like that, it won't knock your light off. All right, so you can see where we, uh, where we put the hole here. I used calipers so that we could get it even on both sides and took an inside measurement from right here and then also a measurement from the bottom here. Scribed a line here, scribed the arc there, the arc here from this inside measurement to give us a perfect center point on both sides so they're uh, they're good and consistent. I did go ahead and start with a punch and popped a hole there. And then I drilled a pilot hole with just the, the smallest bit that I have. I think this is a 16th inch bit uh, just to create a pilot hole. And then I went through with a step drill to get to the accurate hole size that we need for the shaft of the actual light. Now the, the shaft here, the mounting shaft that we have here, uh, with my calipers measured just under a half an inch, we drilled a half an inch hole and it actually required it to be just a little bit bigger than that. So having that step drill bit will actually help you to get it to a fairly close size and then you can uh, you know, further modify it if you need to, to make sure that the shaft fits in. Okay, so to get your light set up, it kind of comes pre-assembled, but to get the measurements accurate, you have to kind of take everything back apart. When you uh, go to reassemble the light, you're going to have to have this spacer on the inside first. Then this uh, metal retainer will go on second. And then you have like this, uh, this spacer. It's a rubberized, it's a very dense rubber. And it's basically just a shock absorber. So you don't have metal on metal. Okay, so you'll basically just feed your wire in through the hole first. And then the shaft, if you've got your spacing correctly, should slide right in. On the other side, you have another dense rubber, uh, like grommet, and another metal retainer. You're going to feed those on with the rubber side, or with the rubber grommet in first, the metal retainer on the outside. And you're going to need to push them in as close as you can because there isn't a whole lot of thread left on the inside of that shaft. Put on your lock washer and nut. We'll go ahead and get it good and snug with our fingers, just kind of finger tighten it. And then we want to make sure that we've got both lights adjusted so that they're symmetrical on both sides. All right, so as you can see, we've got both lights mounted now on, on either side. Um, we have done some fine tuning to try and make sure that the lights are fairly equal. However, uh, it would be much easier to do this at night with the lights on when it's dark and you can see where the actual beams are going 
and that will give you a, like a, a very fine tuning adjustment. But as it stands right now, these lights are installed. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next part, which is wiring them in. All right, so with the wiring kit that's included in this, um, there it comes with a relay, the wire to the lights, a fuse block, a ground wire, and then a power wire, and a remote wire that goes to a switch that you can mount inside the truck. Now, my cousin has a really cool setup. As you can see right here, there's a four-way power block that goes to a key fob that works as a remote as well. So he can turn on all of his different light bars individually and we're gonna wire it up so that you can use it with the key fob through the power relay and also through, uh, through the switch on the inside of the cab. What we've done is we've gone ahead and removed the driver's side headlight just to give us a little bit better access. I'm going to go ahead and isolate the wires to run to the light itself. And I'm gonna run it through by the battery here. down through and next to the radiator and then it's going to run down to the lights the fixtures themselves and I'll show you how we're doing that and right here is where the wires are running for the the lights right in here is where we're running the wires to connect to the lights as you can see he's just hooking them up so those wires just go black to black and white to red black to black And it's just male to female tabs, so they go in pretty easy. We're going to come back with some electrical tape afterwards and uh, just go ahead and coat those in tape so make sure we have a good uh, waterproof secure barrier there so we don't have any corrosion issues later on. All right, so here's the relay for the light system. What we're going to do is, because this isn't going to be powered directly from the battery, it's going to be powered from this four-channel relay that we have here. We're going to go ahead and lose these ends because we don't need them anymore. Same with the red wire. You want to make sure you make your cut after the uh, fuse block, though, because that's a safety concern. You always want to have as many fuse blocks as possible. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll go ahead and strip back just a little bit of the wire here. Twist your wires up. Get a good strong connection. And then we're just going to go right here on this next channel, channel three. Loosen up the terminals. And we're just going to follow suit here. You can see black, red, white is acting as a negative on this wire, red. So we'll start here again. Do it negative first. Right in the terminal. Next channel over, or the next slot over is the power. Tighten the terminal down. That's ready to go. I'll take this and just slide it right next to the battery. And we'll tighten, we'll tidy all this up at an, another time. All right, so now that we've got the wires connected, 
I'm going to go ahead and this is probably just an, a layer of security that you don't necessarily need, but it's going to make me feel a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and put electric tape all the way around these wiring connections. Uh, if nothing else, it will help keep moisture out and moisture and electricity. They're really good friends, but they're not good for you. So we're going to go ahead and secure that. Got a nice secure connection now. It'll keep all that moisture out of there. I'll just feed those wires right back up through there. We'll come through and zip tie them in. So they stay nice and secure. And we don't have to worry about them getting chafed or cut on anything uh, as we use them. All right, so we got an eight millimeter wrench here. I'm just going to loosen up the terminal just a little bit. I need just enough space to uh, feed the eyelet. Into it doesn't take very much. That's good and secure. Now this side did not have an eyelet. So we have cut back uh, about an inch worth of wire um, sheathing. We're gonna do the same thing. There we go. turn that off turn it on? yeah it's it's jumping power I don't know if it's kicking the lights on but... oh I thought you did it with the remote sorry it's off right now okay all right so now we've connected the ground to the ground terminal of the battery and the hot to the hot terminal of the battery now we're going to run the remote wire for the switch and we'll give her a smoke test and see how we do okay so the wires come in from the lights right to here which connects to this relay then this relay gets powered by this four port uh, power switcher uh, this allows for the driver to have a remote switch that they can have as a key fob and then after that, it goes to wires that get fed to the negative and positive posts of the battery. And then it gets fed to this remote wire. You can see I've got it wired, uh, tied, and tucked back behind the fuse panel. And then it feeds down through there, right there in the back, and goes through the firewall into the cab of the truck at which point it terminates at a switch that the driver can manually turn the lights on and off from the battery so that uh, it doesn't accidentally drain their battery. Pretty good setup. Pretty good setup. Let's give it a smoke test and see if we got anything, uh, any issue. Okay, give her a while. Bam! That's nice. These are, let's see what brand these are. Anzo high intensity off road lights, six inches. And I think they were like, my cousin told me they were 20 bucks at a local big box store. So we are not sponsored in any way by any of these products that we're installing. We're just showing you what we had to work with and what we're trying to do. And I think overall they turned out pretty bad. That's, I mean, that's some bright lights. Bang. Good Lord, there you go. So, let's kick them all on. All right, let's see what you got. Good Lord. <laughs> all right, that one blinked for just a second. We may have to double check that connection. Huh. 
Try again. Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I'd say. I'd say that's pretty bright, huh? Well, I call that a successful project. I mean, that's so bright you can almost see into the future, so I think we'll be all right with that. All right, folks, well, that's another project in the books. I think this one went pretty easy. It wasn't super complex to begin with, but there were some little finicky things that you need to look for. You want to make sure that your connections are good and tight at all times. Any shorting can cause problems between your battery system and the lights themselves, so you don't want to cause any damage there. Uh, you want to just make sure that everything is good and secure. You don't want to be riding down the road and your headlight fall off. You know, obviously, it would cause you some problems and some headaches with that. So anyway, if you like what you saw here, uh, please consider subscribing to my channel. We do all kinds of things from uh, gardening to woodworking to automotive repair. So uh, if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you like this video. And until next time, y'all take care. We'll catch you later. See ya.